The first speaker is Deborah, is it Rieger or Riger? Rieger, okay. Good afternoon, I'm Deborah Rieger. I'm the chair of the Sacramento County chapter of the ACLU. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, by now, those of you who are supervisors will have received one of these books and one of these letters. I hope you will have time to read them carefully before your vote next week. They have some very interesting things in them. Basically, the ACLU congratulates the group that made the recommendations for some careful thought and a couple of really good recommendations. In general, we are opposed to the uh, part of the proposal that spends nearly half of the funds, about 42 to 45 percent of the allocation on opening jail space. Uh, rather, we think that there could be more jail space made by increasing, the, the jail thing is going to be um, five to six million dollars, but the options to promote pretrial release at the county jail um, are going to be 500,000. We would promote the idea of increasing funding to the Sheriff's Department and Probation Department to deal with pretrial release issues, free up beds at the county jail. We think that the millions of dollars that are being allocated to the county, many of them could safely and better be allocated to helping the various police, parole departments um, do more and better up close work with the people. I'd like to point out that the intention of the state law is not to take prisoners that are being warehoused at a state level and warehouse them at a county level. And I know some people will end up going back to jail and some probably need to go directly to jail, but not every single one does. The probation department has told us clearly today that when the people are coming back to us in almost every case, they know through these people's records who they are and whether they're dangerous people or not dangerous people. And we need to really seriously be funding the programs that will help our counties deal with these people and reduce recidivism, help them get back into protect, productive lives through <coughs> job counseling and other things. The GPS monitoring devices sound like a fine use of money. A lot of the things can be very well done. I'm reluctant to have us spending almost half that money on just re-warehousing prisoners. And I hope you'll have a chance to read these materials. I think you'll find them useful. They contain <coughs> use useful information about what has been found in other states and with studies of recidivism and crime and punishment issues in general. Thank you, and I know this is a hard decision for all of you. And by the way, the, the thing that got, the recommendation that was forwarded to you passed on a four to three vote. So not everybody was crazy about the jail option. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, Alan Ash. Got to go back. Thank you. Uh, I'm Alan Ash. I'm the chapter representative from the uh, Sacramento County chapter of the ACLU. Um, so our new responsibility here in Sacramento County for the non-serious offenders from our local area who would have gone to state prison under the old system is also a new opportunity for us to help the people from our local area with evidence-based community solutions that really work rather than just warehousing people in prison cells that leave them worse off than when they went in. Warehousing people, whether in state prison or county jail, cuts them off from their homes, their jobs, their families, and all the community connections they'll need to be successful when they get out. <clears throat> and having sat through over a dozen hours of meetings of the Community Corrections Partnership Committee, I was happy to see that everyone basically agreed that alternatives to incarceration are the real way to increase public safety by reducing recidivism. But everyone pretty much has to agree on that because that's the position that the evidence supports. For example, uh, the material the CCP got from Strategies for Change on September 16th includes an appendix titled, What Works and Doesn't in Reducing Recidivism, with information showing that treatment programs reduce recidivism between 25 and 50 percent, and cognitive-based treatments are especially effective. Also, the ACLU report you got a copy of uh, today uh, has an appendix that it has 20 pages of evidence uh, based alternatives to incarceration with scientific data showing that they work. And the ASCEND program that's been proposed was also developed based on intensive scientific studies of what actually works. Yet, despite all these alternatives, all this evidence and everyone's agreement on what actually works 
the realignment plan proposed to this board spends 46% of our money on reopening an old expensive jail and only 4% of the money on the treatment programs that everyone agrees work. It's a big mistake, especially when the jail costs $700,000 a month, every month, even now in the beginning when it's completely unnecessary. Delaying opening that jail for even mo one month would save enough money to double our spending on the programs that we know from all the evidence will actually help the people from our community improve their lives. <clears throat> lives, excuse me. Uh, which also increases public safety for everyone. That's why our new responsibility here in Sacramento County is also a new opportunity, and that's why I'm asking all of you to please not squander that opportunity and waste our money reopening an old expensive jail before it's a necessity when you can spend so much more money instead on the alternatives to incarceration that really do increase public safety by reducing recidivism. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Linnea Nelson. Good afternoon, my name is Linnea Nelson and I'm a recent law graduate and legal fellow at the ACLU of Northern California. The ACLU has a long-standing interest in promoting smart on crime alternatives, alternatives to incarceration as discussed in previous comments. We believe that California's decades-long experiment in reducing crime by locking more people up for longer periods of time has failed miserably. We have one of the largest prison populations and one of the highest rates of recidivism in the country. In the wake of AB 109, the ACLU of California released Community Safety Community Solutions, which is the report you have in front of you. It, the report offers recommendations to counties that are developing realignment plans. It was sent to county officials throughout California, including to all of the CCP members here in Sacramento County. Given the importance of Sacramento as the seat of governance, seat of government in California, we are following with great interest the realignment planning process here in Sacramento County. As stated by previous speakers, funding pretrial, uh, I'm sorry, reentry services and pretrial release programs is a more efficient solution than reopening Roger Bellman. Pretrial release programs allow defendants to hold on to their jobs, avoid eviction, and continue supporting their families while they await trial. Reopening the Roger Bellman facility is an expensive, short-term band-aid that will use up Sacramento County's AB 109 funding without providing any useful short-term solution. And as noted by previous speakers, that, that was a, three to, a four to three vote to reopen the RB, RBF. The ACLU believes that with smarter decisions about whom to lock up and for how long, it simply will not be necessary to so dramatically increase your jail capacity. Especially for low-level, low-income offenders, 24-hour-a-day incarceration is the most costly and least effective solution. That cost to Sacramento County is further raised when it is necessary, as it often is, to provide reentry services to arrestees or offenders and their families in finding housing, employment, or other services necessary to mitigate the disruption in their lives to being unnecessarily jailed. Another program that we believe holds much greater long-term promise for effectively reducing crime in Sacramento County is to institute a targeted pre-charging diversion program for the lowest risk arrestees. Such a program was re recently introduced in Seattle and I have a policy paper, copies of which I can make available to any supervisor who's interested in looking at it. Individuals who are arrested with probable cause for simple drug possession, prostitution, or minor property crimes can be directed into treatment programs instead of booking and charging them. This eliminates the cost of booking, jail, and court proceedings, yet essentially arrives at the same result as having them go through the system and sentenced. We believe that such a program presents an excellent opportunity for Sacramento to begin investing now in smarter solutions to reduce crime, rather than wasting public money on a short-term fix of filling more jail space. Thank you. 